everybody. I'm Tom Vassell. I am Z Garcia. Hello. And I'm Mike well, Delicio. Hello, everybody. Tom, you're gonna really cut off the man. He's right well, as of us. How did you I am here, right? I was supposed three? to be here. I want to make sure I, I was supposed to be here, right? Good. Okay. Um, yes, I fully expected you to be here, uh, Michael. Uh huh. Uh huh. No respect. That's true. Uh, I tell you. Folks, welcome to the top 10 list. Before we start, we want to do a shout out to some of our Kickstarter backers. We want to say thank you to Mark Pradris, or Phaedrus, I'm sorry, Christopher Illebeck from Norway, Edward Costa from Roklaw, Poland, and Eric Hilsheim. From where? Thank you, everybody. Just America? Oh, that's boring. Oh, everybody else we were... is so foreign. That's right. I love it. Thank you, everybody. We appreciate your support. Indeed. Today's top 10 is one that a listener suggested, and I thought it was a really good idea until I made the list. <laughs> that is the top 10 games where the first turn is critical. Now, how critical is a discussion topic that we'll have in a minute, but there's a lot of games where I thought, well, this is a game that's critical. Now nah, you can recover, <laughs> at least from the first turn. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a real tricky discussion, like you said, because... How many games have a, a first turn that feels more important than any other turn? Right. Uh, well, that's kind of my metric. You know what I mean? Two for sure. Right. <laughs> there were two where I was like, these two are on the list. That's kind of where I'm at. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> how I handled it is I cheated unrepentantly through this entire list. I, If I thought that um, there was a choice to be made during setup, I counted that as first turn. So... I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm kind of all over the place because although I think this is a fascinating topic, it's hard. It was really hard to come up with, like you said, Tom, something where you really yeah. felt like, well, you can't recover. So I don't know that any of mine are truly that bad. I'd be interested to hear what yours that you feel that much are, but I just kind of went with setup a lot of times. I think like that, that sort of setup bleeding into first turn, I'm, I'm yeah. good with that. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> good. Yeah, it has well, to be. For once, we actually communicated on our orders of the list. And, we always uh, communicate. Okay, we always talk about this. We don't just don't always listen. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and when that is true. That is true. Uh, in this particular one, we ordered them from how important the first turn is is number one down to number ten. Right. Right. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sticking with that. Yes, that's absolutely how I made my list. I mean, in our own opinions and our own, you know, sure. we're going to be trying to explain ourselves to each other here, I'm sure. Right. Uh, you know, I'm really, I'm, I'm curious. I think there will be very little crossover. But I agree. Uh, I guess, yeah. I mean, there's going to be a couple that are the two or three that are mm -hmm. obvious, I think. I yeah, know that somebody missed I know them. that. Two of the ones that I was like, definitely. I also know 100% you've never played them. So uh, you do not know me like that. <laughs> yes, I, I refuse do. to have you make these assumptions about Why me. Is Kennedy involved? Because so just, he is the most board gaming presidential. <laughs> just, just to be clear, if we put these games on our list, that means we should have played them before, correct? <laughs> I just I, I want to make sure I understood what you said there. Uh, let me. Where's a pen? Let's go to number ten. Number ten. All right. Well, I guess I'm the critical, crucial first turn in this list. Am I right? That's this right. Be the best. This, whole, this whole time. Let me tell you. Is, is I will tell you one thing right now. I guarantee you, we will not recover from this. So. My number 10 is a, uh, a like game. Every time you've joined us. You know, this is just outrageous. I if, if I wasn't tethered to these headphones, I'd be out of here. My number 10 is Francis Drake. And this is one where um, it has a little bit of, uh, there's a couple of reasons why. There's really only three main kind of rounds to the game. And at the beginning, you've got what's called the provisioning phase, which has that one-way track mechanic that you see in a few games, like um, uh, Tokaido has it in Parks and some other ones. But it has Gizia. that thing where Agizia is another one, where you can jump as far as you want along this track to get whatever you might want, but you can't go back and you're giving other people potentially more turns because whoever is last will continue to go. 
And so that is You're something you that you can make a really, really stupid first turn. You can make a horrible first turn thinking that this is crucial and, and other people can prey on that. And the other thing is that during the sailing phase, which is the second part, there's a little bit of programming involved where you've got these numbered disks uh, and you're placing them, placing them on particular areas. And anytime there's programming, I think that could potentially lead to a critical error where things don't work out the way you expect or other people kind of get to a space before you, you know, were hoping to, and that could kind of blow up your plans. And so this one I thought had two ways that the the first kind of move is really critical. I've I've played in games where I got too aggressive during that provisioning phase, jumped pretty far ahead because I wanted to take one of these special roles that were out there. And I ended up getting pretty crushed and it took me uh, a long time to catch up. Hmm. I like Francis Drake a lot. I'm having a hard time Believing your how- lies. <laughs> <laughs> I've never played, so I agree with Mike 100%. I think it's a fantastic pick, and he is go. right about everything he said. For sure. Tom, what part are you uh, struggling with? No, I... The English. I, <laughs> I, I just think that if you could say messing up makes a bad first turn, per se... You could do that any game. I could say Monopoly because on turn one, I could land at a property then immediately sell it to you for a dollar. <laughs> sure. It's true. I mean, it definitely... I, I get that. In fact, I changed my mind entirely. Mike is very much wrong about this pick. <laughs> I am in Tom's camp. I, I, I think, think you can do really stupid moves at any game. Like, oh, just on my first turn, I'll pass. Well, no. sure. But I, I don't know, though, that... I mean, because... Part to me, part of the appeal of games with that mechanic of being able to take any spot you want is that you feel that angst. Sometimes you really feel like yeah, you I never need feel the that. angst to go all the way to the end. No, no, no. Not I'm not saying you <clears throat> I went to the end, but I I maybe jumped for five, six spots. I'm smelling a, a bad game in the past here. Look, let's not get caught up in the details here. <laughs> he, said is- <laughs> he said it. He said it. Give the audience laugh. I, I may, I, yes, I may or may not have made this mistake. Now, I, I'd like to think I haven't made it on subsequent plays, but it's still every time I play this game, I think to myself, okay, don't get too aggressive. Try to be prudent here. And so that's why this one popped to mind, but it is my number 10. You know what? I am, I am realizing this is going to be a bit of a therapeutic list. Probably every game on this list, uh, we have lost badly and we're blaming the first turn. Very true. People lose to me. Because I crushed that first turn. Go for it. Tell us. Here we go. My number 10 is a roll and write or a flip and write called On Tour. Oh. And the reason On Tour is so important early on, especially that first turn, is because you're you're using that, you're using setup, which is the same for everybody. And that first turn as the roadmap, if you'll excuse the pun, for the entire arc of the game. Mm. You sort of put into place on the first turn where you think your path will go. Okay, I'm mm-hmm. going to, you know, I got these two numbers that are already set. But the first turn, which is when you add the next two numbers, I might go shoot over to Washington and then loop back around and then end up near Florida with my eye numbers. Mm. Or I might be able to crisscross the country twice. Or maybe I'll do, so, so you know, you kind of set your plan in sure. place. And then you have to, of course, break that and change it, nudge it this way or that. But that first turn, you sort of go, you know, overall big, big, you know, big picture mm-hmm. and start refining that little by little as the numbers come up and whatever order they come up as the cards come up. So I find having that plan first turn out the gate to be really important. If you don't, mm-hmm. if you aren't already thinking about where you hope the map will end up, you might throw out a couple of numbers early, and they really get in your way later on. Right, They're just right. blo- blocking your path. So, um, yeah, uh, on tour, flip and right, my number 10. I haven't I played try. it, so I accept what you say as fact. Yes. Right. That's a good, it's a good pick. My number 10 is Through the Ages. Yeah, you haven't played it, you don't know. Through the Ages, a big Civ game. Now, I would argue that most Civilization games could fit into this type of thing because your opening moves when you're doing any kind of Civ game are pretty big. 
mm-hmm. if you don't, you know, if, if you play Sid Meier Civ and decide to make your initial bill, you know, settlement, you know, in a, in the middle of the desert, you're likely going to lose. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not exactly. It depends. But through the ages, I think your initial moves at least determine how you're going to play throughout mm. the rest of the game. Right. So that's a pretty big deal. Um, I find it really hard to pivot in through the ages. So mm. if I start doing something one way, you know, if I'm going to build my civilization towards production or I pick a leader on the first turn that does this, that's kind of where I'm heading, at least for a right. long time. Right. Yeah. So yeah, and this would be ages. especially rough if you if you made a bad first move in this, then you have another seven and a half hours to go trying to make up for it. It is so that's... not that long of a game. <laughs> it is at most six and a half, and I right. resent the <laughs> actually it's probably a three hour game. But right. yeah. I know time probably passes more slowly as you get older. <laughs> this is just brutal. All right, whatever. Number nine. Okay, my number nine is uh, a game called Assault of the Giants. And this is a game that is uh, a board game that's set in the Dungeons and Dragons world. Uh, I, Tom, do you remember which, uh, what's the Giants world? Do you remember what it's called? Oh, uh, I call it Land of the Giants? Uh, oh, yeah, no, it's that's like, that old TV show. Yeah, I don't no, remember it's Land what of the called. Lost. It's where all the Giants live. No, there's Storm. a Land of the Giants TV show, Mike. Land of the Giants. I remember Land of the Lost. Well, some of us have a, a much more palette of old shows. Land of the Giants is an hour-long American sci-fi TV show that aired on ABC for two seasons starting in 1968 and ending on March 22, 1970. And you call me old? That was before I was born, sir. Anyway, well, Assault of the Giants is a, uh, it's a game that you, if, if you just look at it on the table, you would assume that it's just simply kind of a, a troops on the map area control game. And there are elements of that, but the thing that makes what I feel the first couple of turns, actually, but essentially the first turn, really important is that you you play what are called command cards. Yeah, I wrote this down so I'd remember it. Command cards. And the cards that you play are going to determine the strength, potentially, of other cards that you play. So you kind of play them out in front of you in this line, this command line. And it's similar to what you were saying a moment ago, uh, Tom, where you're kind of setting up what you want to do throughout the game with that first card, because, or the first couple of cards at least, because other cards you play are going to potentially trigger off those. And if you put a first card down with this idea that other cards are going to be triggering that, and then you have to pivot, or you kind of get caught up in something else and don't utilize those earlier cards, then you've set yourself up for a bunch of really suboptimal turns. And so uh, this was a game that it took me a few plays to kind of wrap my mind around that concept of, oh, okay, there's almost a programming element to this where I better think three, four moves ahead and set that up with these cards that I've played. So that's why I chose Assault of the Giants. Hmm. Fay Run, by the way. Fay the Run, okay, okay, thank you. You wrote down all that other stuff. You could have written that down. Look, I believe it's pronounced nerd. <laughs> I think in the in the traditional Elvish, you're right. It is nerd, yes. <laughs> anyway, okay, my number nine, and I'm also you piggybacking on Tom's uh, expression because it's awesome. And also, what are you going to do, come back at me? I used your own language against you. Um, my number nine is Cyclades. Uh, I think I almost put Cyclades, this. the first turn, whether you end up going for something you bid on or you get like you know elbowed out of whatever you were hoping for and end up end up bidding somewhere else whatever you get on that first turn is going to be very indicative of a couple of things what you're going for to earn those temple points like if you end up getting that if you end up getting that character card that if you get four of them that counts as one temple or whatever Mm -hmm. like if you end up there or you go for it and get shoved there you're going for that yeah like you need to now get the other three Mm-hmm. Uh, if you are uh, someone who gets outbit early on, you get shoved down to uh, Apollo, right? Mm-hmm. Then you're saving up some money. You're going to start putting out those little, uh, you know, horns of plenty. Right. Your game's going to be kind of about that, making rich islands. You know, those horns are going to start stacking up. You better defend that island mm-hmm. and load it up. So it kind of dictates where you're going. Yes, eventually you will need to 
defend or fight somebody for your second uh, Metropolis. Yes. But early on in the game, and really for most of the game, that first turn, second turn, is very much about setting your strategy in place. Mm-hmm. So I thought That's this a was a really good choice. I, I it like was, it. I considered it. Yeah, I, I did. It didn't make my list. Spoilers there, but I did consider it. It was in the in the top top twelve, thirteen. Nice. My number nine, Cyclades. Uh, let's stay with some older games. My number okay. nine is an older game that I think may be out of print currently. I'm not sure, and that is Chinatown. Mm. The last time Chinatown was printed was from Z-Man Games, Mm -hmm. and in this you are building different neighborhoods on the board. Now, I'm including, obviously, the first turn, each turn of of Chinatown is an involved turn, and there is a trading phase in each turn where you can trade Mm -hmm. with the other players. And if you do a Mike Delisio, what we call, and mess up... Oh, is that what we call it? Oh, good to know. Okay. well, we call it that. You, the classic you, Delicio opening. <laughs> oh, I can go as far as I want. I'm going to the last possible spot. <laughs> yeah. No, but Chinatown is more deceptive because in Chinatown, especially the first couple times you play, it's really hard to gauge how much everything's worth, and you don't realize how little money is, how money is valuable. Like you might say, ah, it's just two bucks. Two bucks is a lot. Mm. And you can make some pretty major mistakes or victories in those in that very early trading phase to the point where I'm not sure you can come back from it mm. if everyone's being equal. Now, to be fair, Chinatown, every turn is this way, but so is the first turn. So right. that's why I put it on. OK, I, I, I don't think I've played Chinatown, uh, but I've heard Have, that. It's do you remember a- where you lost in the first turn miserably? If not, you haven't played. Got it. I think it's a good choice, yeah. Mm. Ooh, we're all being so supportive, except for about Mike's gaming skills. Except about a- anything to do with me and my personal, yeah, yeah. Of saving the hate. I'm saving it. <laughs> You're saving it. Got it. Number eight. All right. Well, my number eight is a game that we all played a version of very recently, and that might be why it's kind of fresh in my mind. My number eight is Small World. And this is, to me, all about choosing that race-power combo. And because, like we've been saying, it kind of not only does it set up what you're likely to be trying to do, it also is going to set up maybe when you're going to go into decline. There, there's, just so many, there's just so many aspects to the rest of the game that are going to have be impacted by that first choice you make. And sometimes a choice that's been forced upon you in some senses uh, I know that uh, there have been times I've played this game and there's a particular combo that I really feel comfortable with. Like, I know exactly what I want to do with that. I know how I want to handle this. And someone will take it out from under me. And then I'm left going, OK, well, how am I going to handle with what I've got left? And so I just feel like so much of the game is based off of this first combo you get. Because, Tom, I think you were even saying, wasn't there a time you played a game and, it, and you never went into decline? One time. One time. One time. And it was I don't a, think that, I, I, it just the cards worked out that way. Yeah, that's obviously the exception to the rule. But, I mean, that really could be a huge, huge aspect. And so I feel right. like it's crucial to, if you don't get the one you want, to figure out very quickly how you want to utilize that combo that you do get. So Small World, to me, was one of the first ones that came to mind. Yeah, that's a good one. All righty, my number eight is an old bit of goodie, Fury of Dracula. Ah. Uh, Fury of Dracula is, again, sort of about what we're talking about here is that first turn slash positional setup on the board in which all of the hunters need to be really careful about spreading out smartly on the map. And then Dracula, the player playing uh, in a hidden fashion on the board, also needs to be very smart about where they begin on the map. You can call that set up, you can call that the first turn, it doesn't really matter because then the turn after that is still very, very important. Which way Dracula, not just where they began, but which way they start heading. Where, mm. where suddenly does pressure start to build, right? Oh, this character over here moved down, this one moved away, this one did this, I think I can thread the needle going this way. Mm-hmm. Right. It's about that. It's about getting away as Dracula. You're trying to escape 
or get into very opportune fights. So since you cannot double back on your path, you got you to be really careful about where you begin, which way you begin heading. The setup in this one, that beginning, that first turn, you could, if you do that badly, you could be in a fight in three turns. You do not, <laughs> as Dracula, want to be in a fight in three mm-hmm. turns. Right. So I thought this was a uh, one that really, you know, that beginning is very important. My number eight, Fury of Dracula. That's interesting. Mm. I was trying to think of a social, not a social, but a uh, hidden movement deduction yeah. game because they all kind of fit in the same category. But I always thought you could still wiggle out of a bad opening. Maybe if you don't get killed. Yeah. Yeah. You're okay. still going to be suffering. It's like an uphill climb. If you yeah. have to jump out to water, you know, if you have to jump out to sea. You don't want to have to do that unless you absolutely have to. You spent you the half of the to. last game we played at sea, if I remember you did. correctly. You did. And you I lost, too. right? I yes, mean, you did. It was amazing. Yeah, but then I went home and I set it up again from that very point and I kept playing and I won. <laughs> well, that's how you do it. Take a picture, go back and, well, this is what Jason really would have moved. All right, fine. I win. That's all what right. we call revisionist that's, history. That's I need to do that. Mm-hmm. Oh, all right. My number eight is ISIS. Possibly on Mike's list. We'll see. And I think that is Root. Now, Root's really been on my mind lately since I've been playing the app. Root, especially a couple of the factions, I think the opening turn is incredibly important. The cats is important because you control the board at the beginning, and you don't want to lose that initially. The birds are important because you want that first combo that you're building to last as long as possible. Um, the I don't know so much about the... I think the Vagabond could probably mess up their first turn, but... Yeah, the Vagabond's just gallivanting around the forest. Yeah, I think he could pivot, and maybe the Woodland Alliance could pivot, but the other two, you got to really come in strong right. and not mess up on that first turn. Hmm. So I think it's because of what you said. The, the, the Vagabond and the Woodland are slow burn factions, whereas the, the birds and the, and the cats start in that position of power. I would say that the birds, I think, are the ones that fit this the best because, again, there's that oh, programming yeah. element. You can go, you can go into uh, a turmoil on your first turn if you just do something again. That's, that's a bonehead really thing. bad if you do that. Right. it is. That's that you're, would be like going to the last space. You'd be pulling a Delicio in that case. I the really let me, let me make this clear. I don't want this to become a thing. The Delicio blunder is a I, thing. I really, we can leave the just, uh, Dice Tower Dictionary. I'm editing on the Go right to here. UrbanDictionary.com <laughs> and type in Delicio Blunder. Actually, I, don't because I wouldn't that's, do that's that. dangerous. You know, I would not do that. No, not a <laughs> good idea. That's All a right, good my, choice, Tom. Thank you. My number eight is Root. Number seven. All right. Well, I'm going to be interested if either of you have this on on your list. Um, This is a cooperative trick taking game, and I could probably end right there. You'll know I'm talking about the crew. Um, The crew, I think, in a couple of ways, the first turn is is crucial. Number one is this is this idea of am I going to use my communication? Am I going to use my ability to communicate by saying whether this is the only of a particular card I have or the highest of a card or the lowest? I think when you do that could be very crucial. And oftentimes I feel like, maybe this is just me, but I feel like oftentimes you want to get that information out as early as possible, but that's not always the prudent thing to do. There's almost, I feel like this internal pressure to to do that, even if it's not the most prudent thing to do. And also the first card you play can be obviously crucial in any trick-taking game, but uh, especially in in, uh, something like this where, you have that collective angst of if I mess up, I'm not just messing up my hand, I'm messing up the whole group's uh, mission. And so I just feel like there's this this little bit more stress on the first turn in the crew than in other games like it. So um, I don't know. Based on your reactions, uh, Z, Z doesn't have much of a tell here. He, he does I, not look like he's in on this one. I disagree, yes. Okay, why? I don't think the first turn is any more stressful or important or interesting or uh, Man, you are vital. so hateful towards this game. I mean, no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I agree with everything Mike said. I just don't agree that it all is more important on the first turn. Absolutely putting out that card that gives information away is important. 
Mm -hmm. I don't think playing it on the first turn is uh, necessarily better. If I if I can it's get you a card that's that's like way more important to know on the third turn. Now mm -hmm. at the beginning, I'm kind of shooting in the dark. It's like here's my highest whatever card. Great, but also this character over here has uh, we all have two green ones, and you put out a green one, so not useful. I mean, whatever. I'm I'm trying to come up with a situation, but yeah, I don't think the first turn feels any more vital than say like that fourth turn where you're going. Okay, now I have choice A. I have to follow, so it's choice A or choice B. This is the turn where if I mess up, we're done. Well, does that make sense? Like what I'm saying? It, do it does, but I feel like it's situational. I feel like there are times because I've played games like it, and and it's in a game like this where your missions are so quick. Maybe you don't feel that that huge issue where you would in a longer game. But I feel like there have been times where we played and that after the first round, we already pretty much knew we had lost. Uh, we're like, uh, you know, this is going to be really hard to pull off now because we already screwed up something here on this first round. Um, and so that's kind of why this came to mind. But it is situational. You're right. It's not always better to play that or give that information first round. But it depends on the mission. So I don't know. Tom, All right. would you like to weigh in here? I would not. <laughs> Let's just go to yours. Got it. You, It's coming up on your list. Okay, mm. I got gotcha. you. Well, you know what, Tom? Hey, <laughs> that's my fish. Is it? It's my number seven. Hate oh. or hey, that's my fish. No, not hate, hey. Hate, that's, that's my, my fish, fish is a very different game. That's it is, and I, I, I want to riff on it, but I'm not going to. That, that should have come out. A crossover between hate <laughs> And hey, that's my fish. That's where you say, give me the fish. You're like, no, then I'm eating you. Right. Yeah, that's the... yeah, yeah, exactly. I want to see the trailer um, for that game. Go ahead. <laughs> hey, that's my fish. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, in this one, again, part of it, yes, is set up where you put the uh, your little penguin to begin the game, but also that first jump out from that spot. This board, mm. the, the setup, the tile layout for, hey, that's my fish, falls apart extremely quickly. Like, it takes longer to set up the game sometimes yeah, than yeah. to play it. You immediately fragment this thing. So that first jump from wherever you began out, in in another penguin's face, for example, that, that means that first turn is already, you can start seeing, like, where the lines are going to form. Right? Where if, I'm, if I can cut you off on this chunk of island with only a few fish, fantastic. You're stuck mm -hmm. out there. So right away, it's that in your face, that menace, that jump out to, to somewhere um, very confrontational. And it all depends absolutely on the kind of player that you're playing with. Some folks are not going to be that aggressive right away. Right. Sure. But the game is so short, you almost have to be. You have to go out there and claim as much of the, of the board as you can. So I think that first turn is important. It's extremely vital you know, to to claim what's yours. Mm. Hey, that's my fish, you know? Get mm. out of my face. My number seven, <laughs> hey, that's my fish. It's a lot of those little abstract style games that that meet this criteria. Especially yeah. the, the, I, the land grabbing ones, yeah. yeah. The one I like slightly better than this, it's the, um, where you have the big stack of sheep moving around. What is that called? A uh, war sheep or something like that? Battle sheep. Battle sheep, battle sheep, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, where are we? Number seven. Here's a crossover. First Ooh. crossover. And that's with Mike. That is Small World. Mm. I, oh! I cannot agree more. That first turn is pretty critical. Mm -hmm. You have a bad first turn in Small World, or just not a great one. You want your yeah. first turn to be pretty, pretty solid. Yes. And you need to be able to hold what you have, too. Having someone come and just beat you up. Uh, that first combination, yes, you can take the top the top combination, but I would always consider taking a better combination for right. your first one. Right. The best one you can see. Mm -hmm. And then looking, you know, maximize that points because it's hard to come back from that. It's not impossible. Right. But, yeah, that small world opening move is a big deal. And probably for the same reason, Mike, having just played small world of Warcraft, this was on my right. mind. Yeah. But uh, yeah. A small how, world. How you... How you value those combinations to yes. was really important. Like a it good is. player who's played a lot knows that the combination of like, you know, uh, dragon riding skeletons or whatever, you're like, 
That's the most powerful thing out there. That is definitely right. worth three coins. So mm -hmm, they'll pay yeah. boom, boom, boom to skip. I might not know that, you know what I mean? But yeah, sure. somebody who's really good, they know that first turn is vital. Yeah. Right. All right. Number six. All right, my number six is uh, the probably one of the most famous modern board games out there, and that is Catan. Is that what we're calling it now, Catan? Mm -hmm. uh, this is all about the uh, that initial setup, uh, where you place your your initial settlements, and and uh, this was the game. Although it's not my number one, clearly, this was the first game that came to mind when you brought this topic up because. Uh, I was actually just speaking to you about this earlier, Tom. This was the game that brought me into the board gaming hobby. And the person that taught me the game was kind enough to point out how important it is where you place your initial settlements because your game could be really be almost ruined at the beginning. If you don't know any better, you haven't played a game like this before and you put it on an 11, 12, something like that, and you're not going to get production, it, it's, it's just... It's a huge part of the game. Some might argue too big of a part of the game. Because, well, I feel like if it's your first game, you should play with the setup it shows in the book. Well, that's I suppose so. I suppose so. I mean, that wasn't the case when I was taught the game. I didn't have the game. I didn't own the game. I had never heard of the game. And it was it was presented to me. But like I said, they were very good. They were a good uh, ambassador of the game and kind of showed... And here's why this could be important, and here's why you might want to consider this and this and this. And so it made for a better first experience. But Did they then even, beat you? Oh, I absolutely lost, but I still felt like um, I still felt like the experience obviously was incredible because that's what got me into the the hobby eventually. And but but I just think it's really important. Even people that are maybe more so people that are experienced can look at whatever the setup for that board is and know look, these are my options. This is what I'm going to have to do. This is what I have to work with. And uh, I, I just think it's it's huge. I think it's it's a, it plays a huge role in how the rest of the game is going to play out. Obviously, you're still luck involved. You're rolling dice. And who knows, maybe the, the 10s and 11s and 12s comes up more than they normally would, but you're playing odds. Well, sure. But yeah, I didn't include this one on my list if, because I didn't do the setup thing that you did. Yeah. But Oof, that sounded like I didn't I did the list correctly. Did you hear that, Mike? No, 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 let me what? rephrase. I didn't pick it because I was following the proper rules that were oh. set down. Oh. There it is. I see. There it, it is. is. Man, I didn't do my sniff yet. There you okay. go. That was good. That was really, really good. Uh, so, I don't care. That's my <laughs> number six, Catan. All right. Rude! <laughs> My number six, I went I went in the uh, Wayback Machine for this Ooh. one. I haven't talked about this game in easily a decade, I think. Ooh. This is a two-player game. It was published Chess. by... <laughs> it was published by Z-Man back in the day. It's called Shazam with two M's. I'm about to Whoa. transform. Shazam with and two it, M's. It, I don't know if you if you, you guys have heard of it, if you know what I'm talking about. It's about two wizards pushing a wall of fire between them on a bridge towards the other wizard. Okay? Huh. I'm reasonable. assuming it's not a wooden bridge. It is not a wooden bridge, though okay. it does fall apart over several rounds. Mm -hmm. um, in, in this game, the there's action cards and whatever, whatever, but the core mechanism, the central mechanism is I have... I forget what it is, 50, I want to say, energy in the bank. Mm -hmm. And I select, you begin with 50. I begin with 50, you begin with 50. You select an amount you want to spend on a mm -hmm. secret dial. You reveal that, and whoever spent the most pushes the wall one click towards their opponent. Okay. Oh. And you, and you keep doing that. Okay? Uh -huh. Until either the wall gets to the other player, or to one of them, or someone's out of energy... And then for every one energy the opponent has left, they can just basically go one, oh. one, right? This sounds uh -huh. really fun, actually. It does. Is the energy a, uh, a public information, open information? It is public. Yeah, you have a Ooh. tracker on a. You have like right. a score. It looks like a score um, a path, and you okay. pull back on it. Besides that, there's action cards, like I said, that can mess around with it. But I'm going to ignore those for a second. Here's the sure. thing about it, right? How much do you spend on the first turn? Right. Right. Because your bank is at its full 50, okay? Mm -hmm. 
If I spend 15, that's a nice chunk out of the 50. If you beat me, I wasted not a few, 15. Right. And if you beat me by just three, because you bid 18, I'm in real trouble. Right, okay? right. Because that's a whole lot gone with no gain whatsoever. So the very first bid in the game, and really in each round, sets the pace for that mm -hmm. round. Right? You can yeah. do bluffing with that first one. You know, mm -hmm. you, you say 16, I did two, just in case you do one. You know what I mean? Right, right. And so now I'm really, I got 48 left, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting. And right away at the beginning, there's that uh, that bluffing, that double thing, that push and pull, how much you go into the reserves right away from the first round. Very important. Right. So, yeah, mm. that's, uh, that's my number six pick, Shazam. Mm. Feel like transforming again. All right, my number six. Oh, you're back now, right? I think is how that works. Mm -hmm. That's true. What if you said it a bunch of times really fast and they're like Shazam, 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 Shazam? Then I think a Beetlejuice shows up. That's right. <laughs> yeah. oh. Number six, escape from the aliens in outer space. In this game, everyone is secretly moving at the same time. So this is my, I guess, hidden movement one. Right. Uh, and. Mm -hmm. In this game, you announce how you're moving, but you could be lying. However, people can keep track of what you're doing. So eventually they should figure out if you're lying or not. It might be too late at that point. Some players are aliens hunting the other players. Some people are humans. At the beginning of the game, if you're a human, you got to kind of pick a path. This is what you're going to do. If you're an alien, this is what you're going to do. You need to decide that pretty much turn one. Mm. You, you're then kind of moving that way. It. You'll find out as the game goes by whether it was a mistake or not. In my case, always. I'm not sure I've ever survived this game. Even as the alien? You just get eaten by the other alien? I'm not sure I've ever been the alien. Mm. you got to get on that, Tom. Yeah. You, if, if you haven't been the alien, you haven't played. That's where I play the game, and I'm like, all right, we're going to play this. I'm the alien. We play, I'm like, yes. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, game's over. But you were the alien, at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All righty. My number. Yeah, this one is very stressful, a lot of fun. But I really think that opening gambit of where you move is that big of a deal. Right. Mm. So my number sip, sip, six. Mm. Hang on. There we go. Yep. Oh, sorry. I just took a six. My opening six is a, open. Number six is Escape from the Aliens in Outer Space. <laughs> He's the alien. <laughs> Number five. I'm losing All right. it. <laughs> All right. My number five is um, Five Tribes. And I think this has a similar feel to the reasoning be, be, uh, that you gave for Cyclades, and it's by the same designer, obviously, Catala. Uh, and it's this idea of you're bidding, not only are you bidding for turn order, which could be really, really important turn one, but what you're bidding is points, which is also, you know, directly that 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 idea of I'm bidding my points. It can sometimes feel abstracted when you're bidding money and money aren't exactly points. But there's that extra oomph when you're bidding your victory points. Um, and since the board can change so quickly and will change so quickly, it's such a tactical game. If you see a particularly good move that you feel like is going to get you a substantial amount of points, you might be willing to bid. I mean, I don't know that you'd go to the, what is it, the 18 spot, but you might be willing to bid a significant number of those victory points on turn one. And that th there, there's this situation I've had in games of five tribes where I'm kind of looking around the table and you make eye contact with somebody and you're like, they've seen the same thing I've seen. They see it. And now we're going to be fighting over this because we both want to go first. Uh, so I just I, I think that in in this game, you can have that feeling of I better get this right right from the beginning. I, I see this perfect move. There are not too many times where you can set up what you feel like is an almost perfect move in five tribes. Yes. Uh, teacher, um, is it possible that it's a pseudo importance in the first turn? That only amateur players think the first turn is important, that important. It's like a you good said, thing. you feel like you make a mistake. And, and actually, this is not a dig at Delicio for once. Um, but you slipping. 
Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Master. But, uh-huh. uh, but uh, well, what I mean is, if is it possible that the first turn is overrated? I mean, of, of, players. Course, of course it's possible, but I don't know. I've played the game a fair number of times, and I still always feel like I need to come out of the gate really strong. Now, sometimes the board state will be such that, that this may not be as much of an issue where it's. I feel almost it's advantageous to go either last or second to last. Right. Uh, but But I think a lot of times it depends on what that board state is like at the beginning. Maybe even the selection of gins that are out there at the beginning, that opening lineup of gins. So it's the um, opening bid that's nice. important. Yeah. I, you know what, Mike? Mm. I'm really regretting having given you garbage for the crew. Okay, here we go. I really should have saved it up for this. Good. Go for it. Hit me. Um, I think that is very wrong. Absolutely okay. wrong. I think the opening turn... Mm-hmm. is probably one of the least stressful where the bidding is the Tell absolute him. least important because Preach there are seven moves on the board mm-hmm. and they all give you about 12 coins or points. Same thing. Uh, okay. Well, okay. And now, I- when you've played, like when you're getting near, you know, you're, you're two-thirds of the way through, sure. now there's a turn there worth 18 Mm-hmm. And the next best is maybe, uh, you know, 11. Now, you better be first. But early in the game? Right. Tom, mm. be quiet. <laughs> Sit down. Um, okay. I think better in the game, I, I absolutely disagree. I think anybody who mm. comes out particularly aggressive out of the gate, and they bid even as high as eight, I'm going to mm-hmm. crush them. Mm. I think I will crush that person, because I can bid zero and have... Basically the same turn. You know what I mean? Like, ultimately, I'm making about as many points as they are on that turn. I get what you're saying, but I mean, I don't know that I've found that it's that, it's that close of a spread of points. Tom, stand up. <laughs> I'm back. I don't know that I've found that. I think, I think maybe you're overstating this idea of every, you have seven moves and all of them are going to be 12 points. I think that's being a little bit, glib on this. I do think that there are times where that might be the case. I but don't know I also the meaning think... of the word glib. <laughs> no, really, I don't, I'm not sure what glib is. No, no I just, I just, I mean, I mean, like, I think you're underselling it a little bit. I, I think, know what it I, means. I already said I knew oh, what it meant. I'm sorry. Um, I, I think that that may be the case sometimes, but I do feel like that there are times where there's clearly a move that's going to be quite a bit better. And again, especially if you sense that other people see that move too, and I also stipulate that it might be that I don't play the game very well. I don't think, I mean, I have well, won the game. Back to my original question then, and now I, I do no. mean it as an insult. No, I've, <laughs> I've won the game plenty of times. I've not won every time I've played. I don't, I wouldn't consider myself a poor player. And there are times where, you know, I've never bid, you know, that terribly high on the first turn, but there have been times where I've been relatively aggressive because I see what's a really good move. Anyway. We're going to have to agree to disagree on this one. That's my As an aside, Z, we got to be nice to Biker. He's not going to come back. Oh, no. Nah, this... What we need to do is set up a play of five tribes. Let's do it. Alicio versus Garcia. I'm coming out, and I'm bidding 18 on turn one. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. All yeah, right. What, what do you got? My number five is uh, also five tribes. Disagree. I think it's... Uh, that would be great. Could you imagine if it was five tribes <laughs> after all that garbage? No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> My number five is a Niroshima Hex. Niroshima yes. Hex. At the beginning of the game, the very first turn, your very first turn, everyone's, is selecting where your HQ begins on the board. Mm-hmm. And that is extremely important. Depending on the army, you want to be tucked away in a corner. Or you want to be out in the middle somewhere. You want to be surrounded by your own guys and your special ability propagates through them. Or you want to be tucked away where you can protect yourself with just three tiles. Mm. Uh, That's very important. I mean, there's nothing else to say about it. It depends on the army you're playing, where you should go. And if you play second, where you should go in relation to where the first guy went. Or, you know, if you're playing more than two people, I guess. But don't do that. Um, When's the last time you played Nairishim Hex multiplayer? Three? I played three at some event somewhere. Mm. It's been in years. Yeah, years and years. 
Uh, yeah, that's my number five, Miroshima Hex. All right, my number five is a game that's really out of the public eye at this point, although for a while it was super hot, and I really like it it's still, although I haven't played it in a while, and that's Dungeon Twister. Ooh. Or Dungeon Twister Prison. They're all the same, essentially. Dungeon Twister, you control eight different characters that have been thrown into a dungeon by some ultimate mad mage who just wants you to fight for no reason other than his pleasure. But the So it has rotating tiles. You have characters who are moving around, picking up items, and fighting each other. There's very little luck in the game. Uh, you play cards for combat. The if If you're not counting setup where you pick your characters, and even if you start with the same teams, that opening moves you make are very critical. Where am I going to move? How am I going to get position? If I fight in the first turn, what card am I going to play? I really like this game. It is way thickier than it looks. It looks kind of silly, mm. especially the cover, fantasy style. Uh, it could have been anything at all. You get a point if you knock out your opponent or if you get one of your characters to their end line. But like I said, you can see everything on the board. The, except you don't know where the initial equipment and what the tiles look like. Mm. But once you reveal them, it's on. And I think that first turn is chess-like, and I refuse to put chess on this list. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's been way too long since i played Dungeon Twister, so I'll just have to say, yes, you're right. I don't I'm, remember. I'm surprised yeah. with all the many, many reprints that this one hasn't hit that mm. list. You know, it. it's... Yeah. Uh, when did uh, Dungeon Twister... Well, they made um, the card game, which was not as good, but the the original should come back out. They could go crazy with the minis for this. Yeah, throw it on Kickstarter. Yeah. Dungeon, yeah. Well, it had standees. It came out in 2004. Then they came out with Prison, which no. had minis. I'm mm -hmm. saying they could go to Kickstarter. Sure. And with minis, you know, unlock extra characters, unlock new maps. That's like, true. this has Kickstarter written all over it. In fact, announcement here today, folks. Have you heard of <laughs> Awakened Realms? Well, Awaken Realms has not talked about this game, though they might do it in the future, I suppose. <laughs> Who do you think would have the rights to it? I mean, maybe hmm. Madigo? Christopher Bellinger, maybe? Oh, sure, I the, mean, the name, yeah. designer, yes. All right. I don't know. Yeah. Number four. Uh, before we get into four, I'm going to say that at this point, I'm locked in. Like, these are four... That for me, from four on up, no question for me. Mm. Wow. You will okay. be questioned. Yes. You know I feel pretty good with my number four because I know Z hasn't played it and he can't shoot me down. All right, my Z, number four. Me in. <laughs> you played it though, Tom. So you I can got come you. in. I got you, you can hit me on this one. My number four is Cloud Spire. And this is a game where I feel like everything is in this, the way you set up your initial deployment because you've got kind of deployment points. And you have to choose how you're gonna spend those deployment troops. What troops are you gonna be bringing out? What order are you going to place them in? Because you place them in a stack, they're chips. It's a chip theory game. And so do you stack them together? Do you make them a, a stack unit or you put them out individually? All of these things are gonna really determine how the rest of that round, that whole round plays out. And that could be crucial. There could be times where you've played it well enough that you're able to get some damage on your opponent's, uh, you know, kind of, I don't remember what they call it, your barricade. And then there are other times where you don't even get past one of their towers because you've just done something poorly or you didn't necessarily foresee how things were going to work out. And so most of the time spent in this game is figuring out on that turn one, okay, what's my strategy? What types of units am I going to get? What order am I going to put them in? Am I going to stack them or am I not? Am I going to go to the market? All of these are things you're deciding at the very beginning. And it really can make the flow of the game be crucial at that point. So, Tom, what are your thoughts? I know that you played that. Yeah, this is a good one. I didn't think about this one, and I don't have enough experience with it to, yeah. to a certain, you know, on how true this is. But it feels right. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff you're, you're doing on turn one. And I felt like when I played it with you that I made really bad mistakes that I wasn't. I remember that guy who taught you Catan. Yes. That guy wasn't there when you taught me Cloudspire. So I went wow. I out of like, my way. I don't want to say that I handheld you, Tom. But here's here's <laughs> the thing. Here's the thing about Mr. Tom Vassell that that you may or may not know, friends of the Dice Tower, 
if you suggest something to Mr. Tom Vassell, that might be a good idea. Mr. Tom Vassell is going to do the exact opposite of what you suggested. Not always true, but... And so keep this in mind if you ever play a game with him at a convention or something. If there's something you want him to do, tell him to do the opposite. Well, it's kind of like if you say, nobody can win doing this, I'll think, well, <laughs> right. we'll see about that. Exactly. I've never seen anyone try it's that like before. Start- I'm doing it! Give me yeah. it. That's true. So that's my that number four, Cloud Spire. A good choice. Thank you. All right, my number four is uh, a classic. Dominoes is actually my number four. Oh. And I'm talking here about the one I know, Cuban Dominoes. I don't know if they, if they play like that, uh, in a where else they play like that in the world. But in this game, it's a partnership game, two mm-hmm. versus two. Your first turn is extremely extremely vital and you are telling your opponent or your your partner i should say you are telling your partner a lot of information with that first piece you put out there Mm -hmm. okay um for one thing whichever team is opening the game by putting out a a starting piece they between themselves figure out who wants to start so if i've got a lot of the same number i've got a lot of sevens including Mm -hmm. the double seven I and and we are starting like you and I are starting. I'll I'll probably suggest extremely soon. Like I'll, let me begin. I'm gonna start, and I'll put out that double seven. That tells you, hey, I've got a lot of sevens. I'm strong mm-hmm. in this quote unquote suit. Mm-hmm. I might even have so many of them that the next player right after me can't play. That would be an ideal scenario if they mm-hmm. have to knock on the table because they can't play. Right. So that's the, the, the opening information is that right now, if, if whatever I do, I put out that double seven, the very next player plays their piece is going to be a seven matched with something else. That something else is also quite a bit of information for their partner. And so you're reading who's got what, what are they short of? How can I make the guy after me skip a turn because I block them out of playing? There's all these things that happen and they happen right away on that first turn. Mm. So that is my number four. You know, for anyone ever saying the Dice Tower is snooty, we just had Domino's on a top ten list and a number four spot. That's right. Yeah, Domino's is a good choice because if you don't flip over that first domino exactly right, the rest of the ones that are supposed to fall, they just don't do it. And so I, I couldn't agree with you more. This is a fantastic choice. Well, at least he's agreeing with me. <laughs> Take what you can get. <clears throat> All right. My Thank number you. four. Z, other than when he joined the Dice Tower, has never been more wrong as when he said Mike shouldn't put the crew on the list because mm. Z just is not good at this this game or something. That first something. turn is so critical to the point where someone will throw a card down, and I'm like, we yeah, lost. we're done, we're done. We lost. <laughs> yeah, uh, that is. I'm sorry, the crew is so it's so important. Those opening shows what you're gonna do, and that opening card you throw out more than any other trick taking game mm-hmm. easily. Yeah. This is two on one. I'll that's take, right. Even if it is, Mike, that's still <laughs> more than one. I, where, where's the exit? I, I can't. <laughs> hey, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jumping on that ship. I don't care if it's going down. I'm jumping on. I love Good the choice. Crew. Number three. All right, so Tom, you said you were super solid on your top four. I, I feel pretty good about four, especially since he hadn't played and he couldn't crush me into the ground. I'm right. super solid on my top three. Uh, right. I feel good about these three. So Let's my number it. three is uh, a tactical skirmish game called Wildlands by Martin Wallace. And this game, Ooh, one of the good. reasons why I love this game so much is that it's all about the setup. And I absolutely consider the setup in this game turn one, because what you do is you've got a, a numbered map that has 40 spaces on it, and you have a deck of cards, one to 40. You shuffle them up, and each player will get 10. You choose five of those 10 are going to be where your units are going to pop up on the board. So your opponent has no idea until you turn over a card and say, okay, I'm popping up on 23. Mm-hmm. The other five cards are going to be where your opponent's crystals are that they're trying to get for points. And so it's the, the setup in this game is I, like 30% of my enjoyment in the game is in this part of the game where you've got those 10 cards, 
you're picking your five units to come out where you want them, and you're picking your opponent's five crystals on where you want them. Yeah. And that could be so important because a lot of times you'll want to put a crystal in such a way that when they come over there to get it, you ambush them because you've set yourself up to pop up right next to them. And you could even play a interrupt card right in the middle where they're about to go get that. And you're, nope, I'm right here, and I'm going to punch you in the face. Yes. So, I think that uh, Wildlands is a fantastic <coughs> game for that first Or Judge turn Dredd. So important. What's that? Or, or Judge, Judge Dredd. Dredd. If you like that theme better, the Judge Dredd Helter, Helter Skelter, Skelter is the same yeah. game. Same game. So that's my number three, Wildlands. I think it's a fantastic pick. I really do. Thank you. I, you got, you got three-way agreement here, Mike. All right. All right. My number three is a game I don't particularly like that much, actually. <clears throat> but I think the first turn is incredibly important. And that is code names. Huh. I think code names, the very first turn where everything is on the board. If you are the kind of clue giver who can get your team to guess three things on that opening gambit, you're probably going to win because I can only give them a clue for half a card. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Hatred. <laughs> Seven. Right. If you can do that crazy move where you go, you know, uh, donkey four. And they're like, oh, this one, this one, this one, and maybe that one, but we won't guess on the last one. If they get three right out of the gate, I think that's pretty good. If they get four, yeah. that's really good. Um, again, I'm bad at this, but I know that that first turn, you simply have more opportunity because there is more on the map, on the on the map, on the you know what's out there. You also need to be really careful about making sure that you don't include in your clue the bad card, the, the bomb, right? The one sure. that if they if it get, gets uh, caught in the crossfire, it's going to outright eliminate you. So that very first salvo out of the door, I think, is really important. And I another thing... I a box of code names here, but the code names pictures as the... That's true. Yeah. I did, because it doesn't really matter. I, you know, it's code names as a family. I, any of them work. Um, the other thing about it is, if you... Based on that first turn, if your team doesn't guess as many as the number you said, then they have a carryover clue also. Mm -hmm. You know, if I say uh, potato four and they guess two things, there are two other cards out there that I associated with potato and you can carry that over. So, there okay. you go. That carrying mm -hmm. over stuff makes sense. I was going to say you yeah. could do that any turn, but you're right. If you start yeah. out on that first turn strong... Yeah, you, it's kind of a down. I've definitely got to the point where I'm like, well, we need to do four right now to win. That's, that's what right. I mean. Like catching up in this game. If you're not keeping pace with the other team, you are losing unless they mess up. Sure. You know. Um, so, yeah, my number three code names. All right. My number three is uh, this. You could have put any of the 18xx games, I think, probably on this list. I don't play those enough to know. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to say Age of Steam here. Age okay. of Steam, I like it a lot, but that first turn, that bidding, the first bidding round is important as to what you're going to get. The ex, you know, whatever's needed for that particular map, laying the track out first to be able to claim and uh, where the best combos are on this board. I'm telling you, every time I play Age of Steam, I always have a bad first turn and then don't catch up. I've won Age of Steam before, yes, but against inferior players. That's rude. <laughs> that's true but i lose to superior players much more often that's how playing games works i, I don't know even yeah yeah but yeah 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 so what i'm saying is the, it's the first turn no i've gone i've gone out of that first turn from agency many times going oh well here we go for the long haul that's how i go out of every turn in age of steam <laughs> it's true yeah yeah it's, a, it's actually true yes Oh. Hey, just Steve, my number three. <laughs> number two. All right, so my number two, Z, you said that you weren't a big fan of your number three. I'm not a big fan of my number two, uh, but, mm -hmm. but I do feel like this is a game where the first turn is really important, and that is Kingdom Builder. Uh, Kingdom Builder, the game where you've got you know, the modular board with the different terrains and you, you've you got one card you're working with. And depending on where you start your settlements, that could really be crucial, really, really crucial to how the rest of the game is going to go. Um, I just feel like 
you're setting up your whole game, really, in many ways, with that first turn. Uh, and that's one of the reasons, honestly, where I, why I'm not a huge fan. I feel like you're you're very limited. You're very constricted in that game. And I do feel like that's part of the design. I feel like that's a purposeful design decision that was made. It's just mm. not one that I particularly enjoy. I like feeling like I've got more options than fewer. Um, but that, deci- that design decision leads to a crucial feeling first turn where you can feel like you're pretty much like cornered, you know, it's like, well, well, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here because of what cards came up because I've got one card I'm working with. Uh, and so kingdom builder was another one that, that came to mind relatively quickly for me because I've, and this is one where I will clearly stay. I have felt like I've lost the first turn in this game based on, on, on how, uh, yeah, it, it you're going to have out. to play the new one and tell me what you I think. I haven't played the new one. Yeah, I'd like, do you Kingdom. feel like it mitigates this somewhat? I think you might be surprised at the difference of it. Okay. Well, what are yeah, your I'm, thoughts I'm on interested Kingdom? Too, I, yeah. I feel the same way as you do, Mike, about okay. the game. And, and what you're saying makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And I am also interested in checking out this new Winter one, Winter Wonderland yeah. Builder. Yeah. <laughs> it's Winter Kingdom. <laughs> I don't want to get people confused here. Right, right. But yeah, that's that's my number two. I think it's a crucial first turn. Kingdom Builder. All right, my number two is a party game of sorts. And I think the very first turn is by far the most important turn. This is Spyfall. Spyfall, the first time it's your turn to open your mouth, people know about 80% of what they need to know about you, if not 100 (laughs) You know um, what I mean? It's, uh, uh, it, what's the the weather? What? Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Like, so that first round, like, you know, I, with, with the first time anybody, any one given person speaks, so their first turn, incredibly important. Yeah. They could go from, like, no suspicion at all, which is probably true, but also they could be amazing bluffers, right? Mm-hmm. To, I don't know if I can discount you as a possibility for the spy, to, oh, <laughs> so-and-so. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so incredibly tense, so very important that you do not mess up your mm-hmm. first turn out of the gate. It might go around a few times. It, it might. But that first turn, I, I really do think, is like three quarters of the like the figuring out who's who at the table. Mm-hmm. So Spyfall is one that as soon as I thought of it, I was like, oh, yeah, Spyfall. Absolutely. I think that's one of my top favorite moments in a game ever. Was where you and me suckered Sam. I said, "Are you?" Sh- oh, I think it was sucker <laughs> Jason, didn't we? No, Jason copied the joke. Oh, yeah. he you know, did. I said, yeah, that's I right, said that's "Where right. are you?" Or something to that effect. And everyone laughed. And Sam said, "What's so funny?" <laughs> like, Sam's a spy. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. That's pretty good. All right, my number two. So a lot of war games obviously could be put on this list. You make a bad opening move in a war game, you're out. So for me, I'm picking a lighter war game, Access and Allies, Pacific. Mm. Now, in Access and Allies, you could argue that the opening move there is important. But in Access and Allies games, if you've never played it before, you're moving troops around the map. And you each unit has a number that you need to roll less than. So if you're attacking with a tank, you roll three and less, a battleship of four and less, so on and so forth. But in Access and Allies, Pacific, the Japanese on their first turn, all the allied units roll have to roll a one to hit everything across the board. So on the first turn, the Japanese player can wreak havoc everywhere. The problem is you only have so many forces. And to the point where if I'm playing this with somebody and they're the Japanese player, I'll be like, look, you go in there, we'll join you in half an hour. You need to figure out your first move. The first move is that important to the game because they need to destroy as much as they can. They need to blow up Pearl Harbor or whatever, you know, as much as they can, because as the game goes by, America gets stronger and stronger and stronger and is coming back and trying to crush Japan. So it's really cool, but that first turn is so critical in this game. Huh. Yeah, that makes me think of, like, I've, ne- I've, I've never played an Axis and Allies game. No. But it makes me think of uh, when I played Risk, the Star sure. Wars Risk Order 66, where at right. some point, like, you know, the the... The bad guys in it are start weaker than the good guys already, right. and they keep getting crushed. At some point, you need to trigger Order 66, and then you wipe out a bunch of the board and come back. And mm-hmm. the longer you can hold off, 
on calling Order 66, the better your dice odds are. Mm -hmm. So, like, eventually, if you really, really wait on everything except the six or whatever it is, you turn a, a land to the, you know, to your side. If you need to call it early, you only hit on like a one, a two, and a three. So it's the same thing, but right away, huh? Like at the beginning of the it game. It really is. And, and but yeah. again, you don't have enough resources to hit everything. So you yeah. have to determine, and this is what, I mean, it does a pretty good job of simulating what actually happened. Japan cool. hit a whole bunch of places. Nobody was prepared mm -hmm. for it. Right. So the same thing is, but man, I'll tell you, as the Japanese player, I'd sit there and go, oh, because that's your one shot. After that, yeah. you're playing a defensive game. Hmm. Um, I really, really like it. So It's interesting. So that's Access and Allies Pacific. Cool, cool. And finally, number one. Yeah. All right, number one. Give it to us, Mike. All right, Come my on. number one. My number one is Seasons. I'm just going to come right out with it. It's Seasons. Now, this... This is a game that I feel like this huh. is such an important part of the game. That draft, that initial part of the game is such oh, an important draft. part. Yes. I mean, it's everything. It's the whole game. The whole game is there. It's so much so what if you don't that draft? they tell you when you're playing the game, they've got pre-constructed decks for players. It's so crucial. The game is ruined if you if you don't know really how to do that or, or if you just make a crucial error. And this isn't just about the Delicio effect, as I, you know, as you like to call it. This is really about being able to set up a long-term strategy and right. make it pull off. It's not necessarily that you do something stupid in at the beginning of the game. It's that you set up a plan and you were not able to pull it off throughout the game. And so that's really important. And, and in the intermediate and advanced levels, they can even, you know, they add more cards that are potential that are more complicated. And if you can pull it off you get these amazing, incredible combos that are very satisfying and produce all kinds of points. But if you don't pull it off, you're just crushed. And, and you know, you're basically choosing nine cards at the beginning of the game, and you're putting them into three stacks of three for the three eras. And everything is built off of what you had before. And if you can't pull off what you were planning for, it's devastating. And you're doing that before you do anything else in the game. So you're before your, your first turn is what you're saying. Basic, well, it is your first turn. <clears throat> I'm counting that as your first turn. <laughs> and I said that at the beginning of this video, so I am very I'm I wasn't here for that. Uh-huh. To me, this is where... You're taking a brain break. No, this, you're right. This is crucial. To me, that, that, that initial draft of those cards is crucial. And so that's why Seasons to me that's is That's really good. That didn't even occur to me. When you said Seasons, it didn't make any sense until you yeah. said that draft. And you're right to the point where when I teach new people, I just either give everyone random 10 cards, you know, right. which is that's close monstrous. to fair, sure, or give them those preset ones. It's not yeah, monstrous. It's better than letting some people draft. 10 yeah. random cards. I might have... An amazing set of combinations. Yeah, and highly might doubtful. Know it. But it's but even if you get those ten cards to know which ones to save for each era, right? Is exactly. really critical. It is. Okay. Well, my Good number choice, one. Mike. Thank you. I would, I don't want to hear garbage from either one of you for my number one. You're getting it anyway. Here we go. Each veggies. It's a crossover oh. with both of you. Oh. Small world. Yeah, I thought you were to say the crew. I was like, wait. <laughs> Five tribes. <laughs> the crew. Psych. No. No, it's a small world. I agree with what you guys said. Absolutely. This is a, this is the one when I I didn't think of it right away because it's such a bizarre topic. This this yeah, topic is. It really when it is. finally landed on small world, I was like, oh, okay. What's the rest of the list after mm. one? You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that first turn is possibly 100% of your game, you know, right? I mean, right. or at least half your game. Right. It's a good turn. chunk of your game. It I is. I mean, if you go into decline twice, you might, but that's rare. So it's at least likely 50% of your game. Right. You have probably two races. This is half the game right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important. And like I said, I think if someone who is really good at the game knows how to value those combinations is going to crush someone who does not have a grasp yeah. on that. Yeah. Even if they have to pay a little bit more, they know they can make it up. You know, that's the difference. 
Right. So absolutely, this is this shot to number one yeah. right away. Very similar to Five Tribes in that way, Z. Yeah. I see what you did there. <laughs> All right. My number one is a game I absolutely despise. Oh, interesting. But uh, apparently the first turn's important because if you don't do the right thing in your first turn, you may be stuck for the next four hours playing a oh, game. Which I know what you're going to pick. Score very few points, and your opponent will get not double your score, but 20 times your score. And that would be Food Chain Magnet. Yeah. Now, I've heard that um, huh. a lot of the splatter games are this way. Right. I've heard that too. But my word. And when I was done and talking to people, they're like, well, yeah, on the first turn, you should have done this, this, and this. I said, well, that would have been really handy information on the first turn, <laughs> you know. Um, because yeah. when I was there, they're like, oh, you can just, you can pick anything you want. There's like all these different roles, but apparently only four of the six you can pick are the ones you should pick. And if you pick mm -hmm. this one, then you need to do this and blah, 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 get this game out of my face. <laughs> I'm sure the people who play it enjoy it, but you're wrong. No, you're not. You're not wrong. But wow, that first turn's important. And it just compounds. I've never played a game where the second turn, I regret it my first turn. And the third turn, I regret it both the first and second. The fourth, and at the end, I just regret it, well, life. But, right. um, right. uh, ah, wow. Yeah, I haven't played this, but I have heard this from multiple, multiple sources that it's brutal. That And I've, like you were saying, I've heard that many uh, splatter games are like this, where you've got this huge open, you know, you, you've got this vast wonderland of choices, you know, like, like, hey, you've got 20 workers in the whole game. And if you want to, you could put all 20 out on turn one. You know, that's great. And that's novel and it's cute, but it also can lead to a very unsatisfying experience if you are not prepared for it. So that's interesting. All right, let's see what the people said. Number 10, people voted for terraforming Mars. Okay. I think the first one is important. I don't know how critical it is. I, right. I think you can overcome a bad draw, sure. for example, or sure. whatever. Number nine, the crew. Okay. Validating two of us. Number right. eight, access and allies. Number seven, Five tribes. What? Wait, wait. Say that again, Tom. I don't think I heard you. Number six, <laughs> Puerto Rico. Oh. I guess Puerto Rico has a first turn. It's almost scripted, though, isn't it? Ish. Yeah. All right. Number five, Kingdom Builder. Obviously, Mike came and looked at this list. Yeah, no I have kidding. It. I have Mike. it, but I'm I'm, I'm happy though. with your own. I'm happy so far. <laughs> Number four, chess. Yeah, I didn't put it because okay. I don't play it enough. I love number three, tic-tac-toe. <laughs> <laughs> they're not, they're uh, not wrong. The most yeah. obvious, is the most right. obvious pick. That would have been yeah. hilarious. Yeah, that is, funny. yes, you know, I'll play with Jimmy and he'll like do his first one in the corner. I'm like, are you he'll sure? Like, Ooh, come on, play. <laughs> number uh, two, food chain magnet. And number, number one, one, Dominoes. Settlers of Catan. Dominoes didn't even make the list. That's yeah. terrible. <laughs> uh, I'm going down, actually, I'm looking through the one vote things. Mm. No, didn't make the list at all. Well, I stand uh, corrected on five tribes then. Look, Z. And, you, and the crew. Yeah. The crew, uh, you almost swayed me a little bit with five tribes. With with your, you know, points are relatively close. You didn't completely sway me, but your crew, you'll never convince me. That's it's like Tom said. You can know after the first card is down, you're like, oh, we're done. You know, <laughs> yeah. to me, that's the definition of a crucial, <laughs> crucial first move. So, alrighty, folks. Well, if you're watching this later on, put your own down in the comments. What do you think is a game with a critical first turn? We appreciate everybody watching. We hope you have a fantastic weekend. Stay tuned. Tomorrow we'll be back playing Photosynthesis and the new expansion for it live. And then next week, the number of games we're playing is a lot. So yeah. come back and keep an eye out on those. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Thank you. I'm Mike Delicio. Have fun making top ten lists. <laughs>